Welcome back, everybody, to We Are TPM with myself, Kyle Teixeira, sitting across from John Teixeira. Hola. This week, we are going to discuss our pool homes, good rental properties. And before we get into it, if you guys have any questions for us about any of our previous topics, this topic, or just want to give us a call and talk through anything, give us a call, 817-818-9039. Choose an email at showmethemoney at wertpm.com or come by our office in downtown Mansfield and say what's up. No, it's, uh, we can show you the money. Yeah, or we could talk about our pool homes, good rental properties. Yeah, we could talk about that. This is an interesting, but uh, this is an interesting topic because there's a lot of people out there that won't even consider renting their property because they have a pool for all kinds of various reasons, fears. Some of them are valid, and some of them, you know, maybe maybe not so valid. But I guess I really wanted to talk about the pros and cons to renting a pool home and you and I, we do both long-term and Mm short-term. So there's really a different answer for both of them, isn't there? There is. There's a lot of key points when you get into Mm -hmm. uh, those two um, because they're significantly different and, you know, there's, there's definitely pros and cons. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's talk about the defined good real quick. Good would, you know, to an investor means profitable, right? So is it profitable to increase cash flow? So yeah, home absolutely. in your rental portfolio. Absolutely. I, I typically tell people, depending on the rest of the backyard, a pool should net you at least 10% more rent mm-hmm. per month. Mm-hmm. Now I say, depending on the rest of the backyard, if you got just a pool, then you're probably not getting much more than 10%. If you got a pool and a spa, maybe a little bit more than that. You got a pool, a spa, and a great patio with an entertaining area and, a, and an outdoor kitchen, we're, we're going to go for broke, and it might be more like 20% more, right? Or you're in a you know low supply, high demand rental market. <laughs> There's that too. <laughs> and a pool home with a spa and a backyard kitchen shows up on the market. <laughs> and it's a nice little frenzy you get to pick. You know, yeah. So you might get a little bit more than 20%. Um, but yeah, that's the laws of supply and demand. So um, the answer is it gets you more. Um, is that a good thing in general? Yes, as long as it's not, you know, the cost of having that pool home versus a home without the pool isn't in excess of, you know, of that risk. Because there are added things that come into a pool. Uh, pool repairs, pool service. Um, you know, one of the things we do with our long-term rentals is... Uh, requiring them not just to use pool service, but in some cases requiring them to, you know, reimburse us for the pool service. That way we know it's getting done. Yeah, no, in Um, in all cases now, that's kind of a change we made this year (laughs) was that we we now require our tenants to use our pool service, this pool service of our choosing. We build the tenant for it. They pay for it. But we maintain that contract with that pool company. Yeah, and then the company lets us know if anything's mm-hmm. going on and all That's that. Because right. pool pool issues can, you know, get worse very quickly. Very um, quickly. And we're talking days, not weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. We learned that recently, didn't we? Recently, we learned that. Constantly. We learn it all the time. But. <laughs> so we manage two different types, mm. like we said, long term and short term. Well, there's significant pros and cons and differences between short-term rentals like airbnbs and stuff and long-term rentals where someone's just living in it but but the pros kyle are the same whether it's short or long term right like the 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 reason to do it let's forget about the fears we'll address the fears in a moment and we'll address the cons to not doing it but the reason to do it is the same it's revenue Mm -hmm. yeah revenue 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 cash so whether you're long term or if you're short term Like, what what do you think, Kyle, that the difference between a home and the very same like home with a pool on a short-term rental basis, what do you think that difference is? I don't know if you've ever figured that out, but... In the on season, it's actually about double. Um, Yeah. It, like... Significant. Like, in in Texas, we're in Texas, so um, in the on season, when I call when it's hot, when, you know, the pool is definitely... (laughs) uh, Well, we have... Our sports. What is it? What, why? Why did I just forget what it's called? We have our our modern sports theme. Modern sports themed Airbnb, which is very similar to our pool home in the same home. city in the same location. Yeah. Or, you know. So how? What's the difference between those two? Right now in June or July, what's the difference in nightly rate? The pool home makes 
double, you know, if not more than double, uh, depending on, you know, time of year, you know, July 4th weekend, for example, rates get really inflated for pool homes and stuff like that, because that's one of the draws of, uh, making it a place where you don't just stay, but you can entertain for whatever the, Mm -hmm. the occasion is like 4th of July, everybody's using the pool, Mm -hmm. um, 4th of July in a regular home, they're probably staying there and going somewhere else for Mm -hmm. whatever, you know, occasion or entertainment they're here for so it it can definitely increase revenues and i'd say in the on season double the revenue uh, is probably your 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 floor you know another example of that was a recent guest that told you sp- specifically that they were about to book another unit in very close to ours for half the cost mm-hmm. and they chose to pay twice as much to stay in our home because it had a pool. Yeah. And it's laws of supply and demand. Even the, you know, it's not as common to have pool homes and long-term rentals. It's also not as, I wouldn't say it's not common, but it's, uh, there's lesser supply of pool homes on, in the short-term rental sites and everything. Well, they're scared to do it in some, uh, on the investor side, but on the, on the shopper side, the consumer side, they're the first things to get, eaten up mm-hmm. you know everybody in texas anyways you know when you're looking at you know we talked about short-term rentals a lot or what's unique about your property what what's mm-hmm. making them book yours over someone else's that's right well a pool in texas when it's 105 degrees outside mm-hmm. is it's pretty good reason to book that that mm-hmm. home over the other one um you know even in the worst case your ac goes out they're on the pool right so mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well we're not gonna we're not gonna speak that one into existence <laughs> yeah. again but uh, so but the value is on here? both sides. It's it, for the same reason that it adds so much value is it does add some risk. You know, you need to make sure that the experience those guests get is is a pool, a usable pool, and uh, um, it it operates a lot differently in a short term rental than a long term. You because... know what? You're bringing up a great point for guests in short term rentals, but let's not skip over probably one of the biggest cons that you have, right? For doing it, one of the biggest fears and reasons why pe- I feel like there's two reasons why people don't consider them or or discount them immediately, dismiss the idea. And one of them applies to both long and short term rentals, right? And that would just be the overall maintenance. People, maybe they have a pool home that they're thinking about renting because they've lived in it. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that have been, they built up pool 12 years ago. They've been maintaining it. They know exactly what it takes. And they know that you have to, you know, hit the filter three times on the right (laughs) side and flip a switch four times in order to make it all work right, you know. And, And so I can't count on a tenant to do that. Like, I'm being funny, but, but there's, idiosyncrasies with all the pool equipment sometimes that that scare people to allow that to be turned over to somebody else even another pool service that is common but it's just like any of the idiosyncrasies you'll see about any long-term rental even without a pool because it's when a homeowner's transitioning to renting out these homes that's very common like, mm-hmm. they'll be that's like right. oh well this that's fan, where we get most this of this fan doesn't work unless you flip the switch three times well okay <laughs> that's something we're gonna have to fix that's for, right. <laughs> before we put renters that's in right. it same that's with right. the pool equipment you're right about um, that you have the you have the benefit i should say as a homeowner of deciding what needs to be fixed and what you can deal with mm-hmm. and all that stuff where when you when you're renting it out for a fee to somebody, you have an obligation to make things work properly. That's um, right. You know, you are correct um, about that. Like that fridge doesn't stay cool unless you kick it every three I was weeks, just trying to be know? funny, Kyle. That's all <laughs> I was doing. Just trying to be funny. But you're right. That's, that's one of the cons, but um, I guess that goes into probably the biggest con is uh, expenses aren't small when it comes to pools. They're pretty much always expensive. Um, when there's a f- when there's a repair when there's a big repair yeah, you yeah, know yeah. if you need a you know a heater you know, it's, it's like not owning cheap. a boat right yeah. <laughs> we're not gonna get into boats it'll no. be a, it'll be another thousand is that what is that what it stands for something like that I don't know oh uh, the b yeah b o a t yeah another thousand <laughs> yeah being, I don't know I think we got I think we're getting that we're, we're missing the o somewhere but anyways I think everyone out there if you're listening you probably heard something about boats and it's kind of the same way with pools isn't it the um, but but maintenance, let's talk about maintenance. The reason why we require professionals to do it is because we don't want to 
count on somebody else. It's so easy to let a pool go. This is the biggest con, right? Mm -hmm. It's so easy to let a pool go green to, to the, get the chemicals imbalanced, the pH, the, um, you don't brush it enough. There's so many things you have to maintain it properly. So we're counting on a professional service to do that instead of counting on a tenant who has no clue how to take care of a pool. They just want to enjoy it, right? Mm -hmm. And people are more than willing to pay for that. And I would say that that cost to professionally manage that, maintain that pool is a lot less than people think, especially when you factor in the amount of money that you spend on chemicals and going down to Leslie's every weekend. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if we're talking Shout about... Shout out to Leslie's. <laughs> are they sponsor of the show? No, they're no, not sponsor of the show. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is, that, that's the part that's significantly different in short-term and long-term rentals is... Uh, break out another break, thousand. Break Steve, out another Steve, thousand. Just, <laughs> Steve just did it. I love it. Both hey, Steve, can you call Leslie's and see if they'll sponsor the show? Do, sure. All right, do, thank you. Do we need to do one for pools? Pull out another... Uh, <laughs> some, some, some L word that means money? <laughs> we'll think about that, Steve. Pull out another lotto? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, those are, the service part is significantly different. Um, you know, in short term... Uh, rentals, there's a high level of use that you don't consider when it's either, even when it's your home or it's, uh, you know, a long-term rental. Generally, even you or, or a long-term rental aren't going to be using it with 12 people, eight hours a day, seven days, six days a week, right? There's a specific scenario where that happens. It's where it's being rented out to people who are renting this place out to use the pool, you know, at a high level. So the service requirements of that are, go way up versus long-term, so... And they also go beyond pool equipment, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have to provide, you know, pool toys and floating, floating devices potentially. I mean, we don't have to, but you want to, right? Um, Towels, right? An umbrella maybe so that if you've got a yard that doesn't have any shade, like those are the things you have to think about. So somebody could actually enjoy the pool versus I'm going to long-term rent it that's their problem. They can go get all that stuff and figure that out. Right. Mm -hmm. With a, with a guest experience is completely different. You got to provide the experience. So two totally different games. I think, I think I would say, um, we feel like the revenue outweighs all the cons for the most part. Right. Definitely. And I mean, uh, especially when you go short term, the amount, extra revenue that you make you can quickly make up for those mm-hmm. repairs when they happen or mm-hmm. the high higher level of you know use that requires some additional service um so to uh, answer the question is is it a good rental it's a great product to have in your short-term rental it's a very good product to have in your long-term rental um i whether you should go build one in a house in a rental that doesn't already mm-hmm. have one is an entirely different conversation that's a- um that's a that's something I would evaluate with your real estate agent mm-hmm. based on what the pool is going to do to your value. Because it doesn't get you 100% back in Well, value. sometimes it does. Sometimes, it yeah. depends on the neighborhood. That's true. So it's one of the reasons why I built my personal pool is because I was able to look and see and, and, and run comparable sales on pool homes and non-pool homes. And I could tell that the money I was spending on that pool... If I sold it today, I was going to, I was going to get every dollar back from it. And that's unusual, but yeah. my point is you have some other neighborhoods that are completely the opposite that you will not get any money back from. So and if that matters to you, it's important to check that before. Yeah, um, very absolutely. Important to you, especially because like your pool that you built years ago would probably be cost twice as much today yeah, to build. So, you, you know, yep. the cost of building that pool comes in as a factor it was a good, too. It was a good decision, a good investment in hindsight, but it isn't always. And I think talking to your real estate professional about that, you know what else? Here's another little simple trick. Like your, your first rental property in the neighborhood that's in, that would, my gut tells me that would be a horrible neighborhood to build a pool. Mm-hmm. And I bet you, here's a little simple trip, trick to tell you if you don't want to call your real estate agent or you can't get run those comparables or whatever and get that drill down data information, do a Google satellite view of your neighborhood and see how many pools are in that neighborhood. If you find no pools or one or two pools out of a hundred, probably not a good neighborhood to build a pool in and get any money back from it. Yeah. And to 
you know, to that point, you need you need a lot of comparable pool homes in your immediate area to get to justify that value. That's you right. know, go trying to get it from a buyer, and they're going to want justification for that added cost of that pool. And if they don't see it anywhere, they don't see it until they go a city over. Um, you know, it's it's hard to justify. Mm-hmm. So, what are you basing this off of? So, <laughs> I heard a new one yesterday. You want to hear it? Yeah, always. I was afraid of renting that home that had a pool in case somebody drowned or died in the pool and I would get sued. (laughs) We don't live in California, so. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. Answer number one. We live in Texas. We live in Texas. So so check your state state laws for uh, for the repercussions for somebody drowning in your pool. I mean, uh, let's take maybe the the likelihood of just somebody else in your state (laughs) suing you. (laughs) I think that there's a human part of that concern, right? That's like clearly you don't want anybody dying in your pool, right? Like that's there's a human factor there. So that's, but but the legal. The legal ramifications for that, that, that's why we have insurance. I mean, most of us have liability insurance for our homes. We, as property managers, require our homeowners to have insurance, liability insurance. We require our tenants to have the liability appropriate insurance. liability insurance. It's, it's like you don't love the what if game. The what if game? Yeah, what if they the... fall and trip in a hole in the front yard? It's true. You know, what if. What if you, the pool gets a crack and it drains and nobody notices and then they walk over and then they fall six feet and they bust their head? You know, there's just a lot of things that can happen. What if the whole house falls into a sinkhole like the like the house did in Florida? <laughs> what if the house floods the pool? You know, <laughs> what are you going to do now? See, so the point is you and I are playing the little what if game and it's fun. I could do this all day long, but those fears, whether they're justified or not, those fears that people have keep them from getting where they want to be. Those are fears in our brain. Usually only they're not actual fears and concerns. They're usually the, and those are the obstacles that keep us from doing things like buying that next rental property. Cause we come up with all kinds of reasons why we shouldn't do it. Yeah. And I'll give you a nice, we can give our audience a nice little tip because we don't have to always be devil's advocate. You can do it yourself. So you have that fear of somebody Mm. getting sued and all that stuff. All right. So what if that doesn't happen? Oh, I make a lot of money. Okay. So if I don't get sued by the person who drowned and tripped and drowned in my pool, which I almost want to Google how often that happens in the U S every uh, year. It's probably like, you know, four. (laughs) How many of those four people sued their landlord for, uh, you know, I'm getting too all in California. I got you. you. (laughs) <laughs> there was one guy that sued him and he was in California. So. <laughs> they were, um, t- the point being that you could, what if anything, right? Mm-hmm. I could, what if my trip to my job every day? So I woke up at nine, I drove 30 minutes to, I don't know, Dallas, right? And went to my work. Well, I could, what if that whole trip, what if that guy getting on the, on the highway crashed into me and pushed me off the bridge and I died? What if uh, somebody ran the, the one of the twelve red lights I had to go through and 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 kill? I mean, like, well, let's like, get specific on the topic. What if the pool? Get, what if the tenant doesn't take care of the pool? Okay, then you got to drain it, refill it, and rebalance it. Or okay, you know. we've had to do that. Yeah. What what's the worst case on that? Eight hundred bucks, right? Yeah, in some cases, I mean, there's a cost to anything. There's a yep. cost to any what if, you know. Yep. But how much more did you make when that didn't happen? Um, what are you going to do to make sure that doesn't happen to an extent that requires all that? Uh, who's paying that 800 bucks? Probably the tenant. Um, Probably the tenant. <laughs> or the pool service that didn't didn't take good care of it. Exactly, exactly. So, um, But to make it simple, yes. I mean, in general, pool homes are desired. Um, we could have the same same. Uh, conversation, a similar conversation, I should say, in like the mountains in Colorado. Should I have a hot tub? You know, is, is a hot tub a good rental? You know, we're, oh. we're 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 being a little bit area specific here. You know, what we're discussing is in the climate, like here in Texas, where it does have value to the consumer. You know, you make a great point. Like we like to go down to Fredericksburg mm-hmm. a couple once or twice a year. We like to go down there and. And one thing I've noticed is when you get um, a short-term rental down there, almost every one of them has a spa. And they all market it. And if they don't have a spa, you you can tell. Like, yeah. oh, there's no spa. I mean, it's almost like if you don't have a spa, you're not getting – you're getting booked last, right? Now, 
fortunately for Fredericksburg, it's such a hot spot during this during the summer, especially that it doesn't matter whether you got a spa or not, it's booking. But it seems to be almost a necessity to have just a little stand up spa right on the patio. It doesn't even matter whether it's upstairs, downstairs. They God, spas everywhere in that town. Whoever's maintaining spas is killing it. Yeah. In Fredericksburg. <laughs> it just has to be uh, in an area that. You know, it's a product that they desire in that area. You know, pools and we manage properties in Orange Beach. You know, nice properties on the beach, great view of the beach. You know, that's what everyone they want. wants he to is. make sure there's a pool so they can mm. go sit in the pool and look at the beach, right? <laughs> I always wondered about that. Why do you Why do you want a pool when you're on a beach? Like, why do you go to a beach vacation? We're getting off topic. Yeah, now, we're, right? we're you know, we lived in California at a point, so we can't. Uh, <laughs> I sit up on my balcony and I look at the beach and I look down the pools below me and there's a ton of people in that pool. And I'm thinking to myself, why would you go there when you got that? <laughs> right? Like, I don't understand it. Well, it's all the people asking, is this on the beach? Yes. Does it have a pool? Yes. It has three of them for some reason. But you can't <laughs> see the pool, the beach from the pool. Not in that particular pool, but anyways. <sighs> They want to uh, swim it on the beach. I can go to yeah. any pool. I don't need to spend thousands of dollars to go to a beach <laughs> condo to go swimming. I can do that. Our anywhere. next topic is: Should you have a <laughs> beach in your rental? No. <laughs> I like it. Good topic, Kyle. Let's 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 pen that one. I like it. I like it. All I right. think we killed this one. That's why we've gone off topic because we've already <laughs> we've already exhausted everything we know about pool, renting pool homes. Yeah, I guess. Uh, so yes, it's a good idea to rent to have a pool home Absolutely. as long as you have water in it. It's it's a good idea. Manage and it correctly. You manage it correctly. You get it serviced and uh, you do everything with intention. So yep, absolutely. Right. Hey, right. by the way, we just ordered. Can't wait to use this. This is this is good. This is good information. We just ordered something that gives us remote. It 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 checks the water and gives us remotely through the Wi-Fi for our short term rentals, right? Mm -hmm. And tells us the condition of the water. On well, I think it's on an as needed basis, right? So we could probably check it, push a button, check it once a week on an app or something like that. That's <laughs> this, what my brain thinks right be now. Interesting, because you know, you know, my you, brain you think about the guest experience. You're like, what is this robot thing in the water? <laughs> <laughs> no, it goes in the thing. They're not even gonna know it's there. Know. But you got a good point. You got to be careful about that stuff. It's like the same people that unplug the Alexas and you know, they're just like they're <laughs> <That's> being. <right. laughs> Uh, well, smart thermostats, smart sprinklers, and now we got it's smart, too smart. Pool, it's watching me. pool maintenance. <laughs> yep, yep. All well, right, be, close us out, Kyle. Be smart about your pool home. Is all we're saying. So, yep. um, but yep. if you guys want to uh, hear all the uh, what ifs about pool homes or what ifs uh, or what you should just go get, uh, give us a call eight one seven eight one eight nine zero three nine. Shoot us an email at show me the money at we are tpm or come see us in downtown Mansfield, Texas, where we don't have a pool, but we might be able to show you some. So. <laughs> <laughs> we can show you some pool homes. I love it. All right. All right. We are out. We are out. Later. <laughs>